My mission upon this channel is to provide details regarding ancient ruins, artifacts, and technologies that clearly demonstrate that there once existed lost, ancient, advanced civilizations that have been lost here upon our planet. My unwavering research dynamic is that said subject matter is crucially factual. Thus, it is always based upon that which I have personally sought to confirm as undeniable realities before sharing. I do not only offer an intellectual armory for you, the viewer, who is often confronted with many academic fallacies, but particularly the younger viewer, enabling their empowerment to correct academics, often ordered to pass on such fallacies through a permitted curriculum. As such, I feel that it is crucial that not only are the facts I share established proofs, but that features which they explain away as others work are established as beyond doubt as currently unexplainable, as such undeniable as the work of others. Exposing academia's lies due to our ancestors' limitations, ancestors often claimed as the constructors of said ruins found throughout the world. Due to this bestowed responsibility to only convey historical accuracies, established mystery, and ancestral limitations. Many independent researchers often privately contact me via my secure armored email, often sharing not only their own controversial research, sometimes including their own expedition details, but also academics in positions of tremendous public influence, who not only share my view that much of the history currently being taught to future generations is not only inaccurate, but is based upon a conspiracy of concealing past civilizations. One such email received recently pertained to something known as the moon shaft. However, although this is not the main theme of this particular video, I will briefly cover what has been shared with me, and after further research, endeavor to do a detailed video in the future regarding said explorations if enough evidence of its existence can be established. Sent to me by Mike Collins, a member of an unsuccessful expedition to try to rediscover this mysterious lair, a brief prologue is as follows, quote, Three soldiers hiding from the Germans in the Tatra Mountains in Slovakia discovered a lair which could possibly be the oldest man-made structure in the world. The structure is believed to be between 300 and 310 million years old by a number of individuals, with Heinrich Himmler even sending several scientific expeditions into the Tatra Mountains looking for the shaft, with members of the KGB also attempting to obtain the diary writings on the experience from these deceased soldiers." End quote. Although compelling, I am reluctant to cover this story yet due to a lack of any physical evidence, regardless of the considerable lengthy testimonies that pertain to its existence, I intend to invest some time in researching it further myself first. However, tonight's subject originates far away from the supposed moon shaft in China. Ancient star maps of such accuracy and range that due to currently attested academic understandings of the history, they simply should not have possessed such knowledge, let alone been able to accurately illustrate it upon parchment, known as the Dunhua star chart. The chart is the first accurate graphical representation of star locations within ancient Chinese astronomy, and it is of nearly every star across the atlas. According to modern academia, it is dated to the Tang Dynasty between 618 and 907. Although I feel this is actually a copy of charts of a far earlier age, and thus of a far earlier, far more capable civilization. Before this map, much of the star information mentioned in historical Chinese texts was drastically inaccurate. However, this map provides a graphically precise verification of star observations and are part of a series of charts all known as the Dunhua manuscripts. It seems, however, in an attempt to quell the curiosity of the astute among us, considerable funding has been funneled into constructing an excuse for its existence. This funded project is known as the International Dunhua Project, with much of the research and indeed exclusive access to the maps solely granted to these academics, which I believe is an attempt to convolute their importance. However, regardless of these tremendous efforts, 
There are many features of the map which remain unexplainable. Compelling evidence of them being Chinese copies of knowledge left over by a past, vastly more advanced civilization. Copies of elusive manuscripts that at some point within Chinese antiquity were most probably found preserved somewhere. First, the Dunhua star map is to date the world's oldest complete preserved star atlas. Meaning that before the ancient Chinese were even a seafaring civilization, they somehow had access to knowledge of the accurately plotted star charts of both hemispheres. Additionally, the main image, which many presume is the entire Dunhua star chart, an insinuation implied by Wikipedia, is only a small fraction of the collection. Yet this piece in itself is an exact, accurate plotting of polar constellations. And due to these ancient Chinese people being incapable of such tremendous voyages, not only does the advanced knowledge copied down upon these charts strongly support my posit of them being a rediscovered copied relic of a past civilization's knowledge. These copies were found in the early 1900s in a walled-up cave containing a cache of manuscripts. They were discovered by Chinese Taoist Wang Yuan Lu in a cave system known as the Mo Zhuao Caves. Although the scroll with the star chart was found amongst those documents by Oral Stein when he visited and examined the content of the cave in 1907. One of the first public mentionings of the script in Western studies was from Joseph Needham's 1959 version of the book Science and Civilization in China. Since that time, however, only a few publications have conveniently been devoted to the map, nearly all being Chinese publications. This map, or as we postulate, accurate copy, was made around the year 700. I feel their lack of public exposure and my reasoning for asserting that they were copies of a far more advanced civilization's work is not only due to the Chinese civilization's inability to travel to such locations to plot such charts at the time, but that the whole set of star maps contains over 1,300 stars. Not only proving that, although the Chinese are academically claimed to have believed the world was flat at the time, the star charts prove beyond doubt that they had knowledge of constellations from around the globe. The academic explanation for this is that although the Chinese supposedly presumed the world was flat, they somehow assumed that the heavens were somehow spherical, which to me just seems like a desperate attempt to discredit such manuscripts' true origins. I believe, due to the in-depth and accurate knowledge copied upon the star charts, much of which were far out of the reach of this ancient civilization's observational capabilities, be clear proof that they had discovered maps left by a civilization that was not only seafaring but global. Also, due to the chart featured on Wikipedia, had successfully explored the poles and accurately mapped its constellations. How did the ancient Chinese have such in-depth knowledge of so many constellations, especially polar constellations? We find such manuscripts, academia's funneling of considerable funding into the discrediting of their inexplicable nature and their lack of exposure as highly compelling. Has ancient alien technology finally been discovered within Russia? According to several talented UFO enthusiasts, along with a number of scientists, that is exactly what has happened. A team from Princeton University in America and the University of Florence in Italy have discovered a quote, quasi-crystal, so named because of its unorthodox arrangement of atoms, found within a meteorite from a remote region of northeastern Russia. This crystal, long thought impossible to be formed naturally due to being too energetically unstable and atomically manipulated. When the team discovered that the meteorite contained this mysterious, ancient, intelligently designed material, they merely moved the goalposts, simply stating that it can indeed be formed naturally. Technically, scientists describe quasi-crystals as quasi-periodic, being manually ordered, no longer found on the periodic table. Although they exhibit a pattern that fills all available mass continuously, they lack what scientists and mathematicians term translational symmetry. Simply put, they are not naturally occurring materials. The meteorite in which it was found is believed to be around 4.5 billion years old, 
Yet alas, when it picked up this perplexing and possibly alien passenger may remain unknown. UFO enthusiasts and scientists alike have previously hypothesized that evidence for alien life would, in all possibility, be found in a form such as this. Pointing out that quasi-crystals, being a novel form of matter, should actually be seen as artifacts of alien artificially created technology. No one has ever been able to explain how quasi-crystals can be formed by natural processes, and no one is ever likely to. It just does not happen. They're forbidden symmetry, making them impossible to be formed naturally. The only other known quasi-crystals, besides those found in the Chukotka meteorites, were only recently synthesized within laboratory conditions by scientists. Being very hard, with low friction characteristics, also a low heat conduction, quasi-crystals are a very useful product, used in a wide range of high-speed technologies, such as the coatings of airplanes and stealth fighters. Two-time Nobel Prize winner Linus Pauling the idol of the American Chemical Society and one of the most famous scientists in the world, argued till his last days against quasi-periosity in Crystal's mere existence. He didn't even believe we would ever manage to create it. Does this sound like a naturally occurring material to you? How did this complex material end up on and within an ancient meteorite? Did this lump of space debris once collide with an alien craft? somewhere out there in deep space? It seems, regardless of what certain scientific bodies would have you presume, that is indeed the most likely scenario.